morning, church. How are we all today? Good? Clap if you're good. <laughs> Can't hear from online. No, I'm joking. Uh, looking forward to an awesome service this morning. Let's do a band. Church, 
today, we definitely want to receive those blessings. God, we are open to being blessed. We are open to feeling loved. We are open to feeling wanted and accepted. Today, Lord Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you pour out to us today.
Spirit, come fill on. every thirsty soul. Come, Holy Spirit. Would you say this? Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit of God just fill your lungs, fill your breath, fill your body. Reach out to Him. Acknowledge Him. God, you're here. And we're here in this space. celebrate you, Jesus, the incredible grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Amen. 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 Would you like to be seated? Welcome to God's house. This is your first time in a while. Welcome. It's your first time. We're so glad you're here. Or you're just returned. This is awesome. This is great. Welcome Welcome. to those who are online with us. Why don't we put our hands together and give a big shout out to those online. Hey, it's great to have you here today. Thank you for joining with us, whether you're joining right now or at another space and place and time later, which is is awesome. We're glad you're here and may Jesus touch your life today. Absolutely. Today, our Anzac Day service, where we really do praise God and thank him for those who have actually gone the full distance and laid down their lives for us mm. that we might have peace yes. and the freedom to worship our God in this country. Beautiful. Yeah. Very so, um, you got something very special this morning. I do. I'm going to have some time with the children in a little while, but you grown-ups can listen in. And then we're going to go out to Kids Church and make something special. Yes. We're going to come back in at the end of the service so that we can After join Pastor with you Josh again. preached, and he's preaching on Love Under Pressure because it's our new series. That's right. It's, it's, yep. it's going to be a cracker. Yep. Yeah. And and then then we've got a special tribute to for Anzac Day. We do. Pastor Chris is leading us in that. Yes. With these shiny new medals. I'm so pleased that they've recognized your service, Pastor Chris. Great. This is pretty awesome. Um, this is beautiful. And, and so, so we've got a special time in the service, and the kids are going to join us at the very Come end. and celebrate yeah, with us celebrate at the that. end, because I think they're making something special. Yes, yes. don't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> and also to let you know that Renee's hubby, Tom, is right now in Turkey yeah, at Gallipoli, in Gallipoli. Yeah. with his work. How is he going? Yeah, he's doing really well. He's about to be extremely tired, though, because he has to stay awake for over a day, <laughs> probably like 24 hours or more, um, at the service in Gallipoli because he's ticketing the event. He works for Ticketet. So they're doing a service in Gallipoli and also at Lone Pine. So we've been getting some awesome photos that I'm sure we'll see later on. So, yeah, awesome. awesome. Thanks, So we've got Renee. a couple of pickies a little bit later sharing the service. And God bless Renee and all her children who help us so much in the services. Well done, you Wonderful. three. Awesome. Are you ready for the kids? Yes, yes. Can I have the children to come down to the front, please? Oh, look at you gorgeous people. Look at you all. So wonderful. Okay, we all sitting quietly and ready. I'm going to ask Ava if she will put that scripture up on the screen. 
And let's see how many of us can work out what it says, how many of us can read it. It's from the Bible and it's from the book of John. It was written by a man called John. Shall we try to read it together? There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Wow, a great love. Do you have something that you love a lot? Yeah, yeah awesome, Phoebe. Yeah, Archie. Oh, awesome. My family and my brother. Yes, beautiful, Yana. Beautiful. What about you, darling? You want to say something? Did you want to say something? No? All right. All right. Jesus. Oh, and you know what? He loves you so much too. And one of the ways that he shows us, has showed us that he loves us, is that he laid down his life for us, yeah? But mm, not every one of us is going to do exactly what Jesus did and actually die like that, hey? No. But he says to us, I want you to lay down your life. So how can we lay down our life each day? How can we do that? All right, I'm going to give you a few little examples of things here. And I'm going to ask a few people to come and help me read these. Come on, Ella, you come and help me, honey. Just move your feet back, please. So, all right, just the first one, you, I'll hold this to you and you can read it out, the first one. These are about people, but they're not real people, okay? I'll just make sure you know that. They're just names and people I made up. All right, here's a situation that Ella's going to read. There is one last mini cupcake left on the plate. Simon really, really wants it, and so does his brother. Simon snatches it and stuffs it in his mouth. Oh, Simon. Did he do a good thing there? <laughs> no. Did he lay down his life for his friend, for his brother? No. What do you think he could have done instead? He could have broken it into two, like cut it with a knife and share it. What a great solution. <laughs> Would you like... Charlotte, would you like to come read the next one? Okay, this is about Emma. Emma, see, Emma sees that the new girl in her class is very sad and sitting by herself at playtime. Emma really, really wants to play with her friends, so she leaves the new girl and runs outside to play. Oh, oh. Is that laying down her life for this new girl? No, it isn't, is it? What's the solution, Yana? She should go and sit down with her and say, would you like to play with me? And, and so she can introduce her to her friends. Wow, what a good solution, Yana. Were you going to say that, Archie? Fantastic. Phoebe, would you like to come and read the next one? John asked his mom to, John's mom asked him to put the Lego off the floor because his baby brother might put it in his mouth. John ignores his mom and goes out to ride his bike. Oh, oh, did John do a lay down your life thing? No. What's a good solution for John? To do the same, to do the same thing that his mum told him to do. Mm. Mm. Which was laying down. Oh. Put the Lego away. Then maybe he could have gone out. Okay. Thanks, darling. Uh, Alexander, would you come read the next one? No. Do you want to have a try, Gabby? All right, come on then. 
Um, I think we'll do this one. This one might be our last one for here. Peter? Peter walks wants. to wants to ask his dad something. He runs into the kitchen and finds his mum and dad talking to each other. He says loudly, Dad, come and play with handball with me. Oh. Do you get it? Mum and Dad are having a little chat in the kitchen and Peter rushes in and he says, Dad, come play handball with me. Oh, is that good? Is that thinking about what's happening in the room? We call it reading the room, don't we? What do you reckon, Archie? He could wait for the conversation to finish and then he could ask his dad to play handball. Very good. <laughs> Certainly with a please, hey. So there's just some of the ways that we can lay down our life. We, if we've got time, we'll look at a few more in kids' church when we go out, have a think about them. But I think you're very good at coming up with solutions. Every day to lay down our life means to think about the other person and what they need and try to help them with what they need, yeah? Okay, let's stand up because we've got that special thing to get happening in kids' church. Wave to mums and dads and grown-ups and let's head out. Bye, kids. Wait for me just Have outside the door. Have a beautiful time. Uh, wonderful. T today, today, the theme of our service is love under pressure. And as the kids are heading off to their kids' activity with Pastor Adrian, we're looking forward to them coming back soon. But just right now is a good time to, to engage in, in some prayer. And in this time of prayer, it would be really cool to uh, get together with a couple of people and to just begin to pray and to pray for each other and to pray for the relationships that, that are represented in that uh, two or three or four people. Because God's Spirit loves traveling through relationships. And, and what, while there's us here, there's all these people that we're connected with that are not here. And as we begin to pray, God's Spirit will touch them and to, and to bless them. You don't have to do this and you might like to just stay seated in your seat, but uh, what I would encourage you to do is actually to stand and to stand with two or three people and you might like to say, here's, here's a person or here's a relationship I'd love you to pray about. You don't need to go into details and in fact, uh, that's probably not the time, maybe later if you want, but, but just now is the time to say, Look, can we pray for this, pray for couples, pray for relationships between mothers and fathers and 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 children and fathers and children and mothers and sisters and brothers and wider family members and friends and let the Spirit of God travel into your, into your connection. Love under pressure. Let's see the Spirit of God, His grace, travel and touch people's hearts and I invite you to do that in, in groups of two or three people and, uh, and I'm going to be leading some prayer for those, those at home. So can you do that? Can you take a moment to, to stand and find a couple of people and begin to pray? So I'm going to take this moment as we're muted in this auditorium, but you can hear me online. I want to pray for you and your relationships at home, and I want to encourage you as, you as you're here in the chat or you're here in the audience at home, that the Spirit of God loves working through your heart and touching the relationships which you represent. So as you watch this service, may the Spirit of God travel in your heart and your life as you open your heart up to Him. And may His grace travel and touch the relationships that you have. May the Spirit of God travel through husbands and wives, through friendships, through parents and children, children and parents, through siblings. May the Spirit of God travel into households. Father, I thank you.
for your Holy Spirit that touches people's lives and blesses them. Father, I thank you for our online community. I thank you, Father, for your love that is so real. Oh, my Father, I thank you. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that transforms. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings reconciliation. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings that brings a grace that enables forgiveness and repairing of connections. And God, I pray for every, every relationship, every household, every family, that love would flourish and thrive and that people would find themselves more and more connected as the days go by, not less and less connected and drifting apart. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that draws us together with great unity and a great sense of oneness. Father, where there is anger, bring your peace. Where there's dissension, bring an incredible sense of unity. Where there is strife, oh Jesus, calm the waters. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for your blessing. Oh, my Father, I thank you for your blessing. Father, thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that travels into our hearts and our lives. Jesus, Jesus, thank you for your incredible love for us. That Even when we were far away from you, even when we were hurting you and doing the wrong thing by you, that you continued to reach out in love towards us. God, enable that same grace to be in our spirits as we reach out and love those who have wronged us. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the ability to love even when there's a real pressure. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. You are amazing, Lord. Oh, my Father, you are amazing. God, I thank you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love you. You know, the thing I found here that's really helpful when relationships are under pressure is to take a moment and, and breathe in the presence of God and to let go of the anger, let go of the resentment, let go of the bitterness, let go of the hurt and say, Jesus, as you love me, help me to love. Give me your strength, give me your grace. And it's amazing how that begins to transform my heart and may the spirit of God flow into every relationship that you have and may the blessing of heaven be upon you and your household may his incredible love surround you today in the beautiful name of Jesus in the beautiful name of Jesus thank you father thank you father thank you father Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, people, for praying for one another. In a moment, I just invite you to take your seats. What a beautiful thing it is. In our small groups, is a great place for people to pray for one another. If you're not part of a small group, we invite you to, to be part of one. We have small groups online and small groups in person. And so drop a line in the, in the chat or email us at hello at c3rabina.org.au and say, I'd love to be in a small group or connect group. And uh, we will help you to connect with people and to connect with those that would pray with you and love you and encourage you. And God bless you. <clears throat> Wonderful. Can you please take your seats just now and can, you can continue your time of prayer later. I was reminded as I was preparing for the service of, of the scripture from Deuteronomy in chapter, in chapter uh, eight, and and it's picking up picking it up in um, 
in verse, verse 12. And it says here, For when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in, then your flocks and your, when your flocks and your herds become large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else, be careful. Here in this moment of time, as we, as we travel through the difficulties of the last couple of years, and it's, and it's not, nowhere near like the same pain that the people of Israel were going through, but there's a sense of journey and a sense of, and a sense of living in a land of blessing now. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah, this, this is pretty good, like what God is doing. And there's a sense of oh, breath that I'm, that I'm feeling in, in the wider community and a sense of, ah, sense of, oh, it's good. There's, there's a reminder in the scriptures that, 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 that when there's a sense of life is good, <laughs> life is good. And it says, be careful. And it says here, don't become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Do not forget that he led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its poisonous snakes and scorpions, which was so hot and dry and he gave you water from the rock and he fed you with manna in the wilderness and and a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and to test you for your own good. He did this at the time. You would never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth by my own strength and energy. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you the power to be successful. Uh, Or other versions say, he is the one who enables you to be prosperous in order to fulfill the covenant which he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. You're a child of God, whether you acknowledge it or not. And there's a sense of blessing that God says, I will bless you and I will look after you and I will care for you. And the warning of the scripture is, is, hey, don't forget who got you here. When you've been through a time of struggle, when you've been through difficult circumstances as we have in this last couple of years globally, and and there's this possibility of a sense of (sighs) some breath, just remember who's been with you during that time. Remember God who sustained you. Remember Him who has provided for you. Don't forget God. Don't forget God. And then the warning is, don't think for a minute you did this yourself. (laughs) Don't think for a minute that you got through this by yourself, that it was your hand, your effort, your sweat that got you to who you are and where you are today. He has helped you. God is your help. I want you to say this, God is my help. He gives me the ability to prosper. Yeah, that there's this inherent thing that's, that's involved in being children of God where the blessing of God would be at work in our lives no matter what the circumstances, whether there's snakes in the desert, whether there's lack of water, where, the, where there's opposition to stopping us from getting into where we perceive we want to be. He's with you and He's walking with you and He's helping you and He's providing a way through. So don't forget. So it's a good thing occasionally to to take stock and go, okay, in this past couple of years, yep, God's been with me. And how's my response to Him? And so so this, this, this verse is a scripture about giving to God. That's what that's about. When you've got your fine houses, when you've got all your prosperous, prosperous lifestyle and you're, and you're doing well and the food on your table, and it's like, don't forget God. Don't forget God. He's not the last priority. He's my first priority. And so, so when money flows into my account and, and, I, and I look at a, look at Wednesday and I, I do this on a Wednesday and I go, okay, God, my first thing is I want to tithe and I want to bring my offerings to you. Internet transfer. Thank you, God. You sustained me. You sustain me. And you know, I choose, I choose this practice. When, when there's a reduction in cash flow, I choose to tithe to the cash flow that I believe in God for. And you know, God provides. He looks after us. He cares for us. He loves you. He loves you. Look not to your circumstances. Look to God who is my provider. He is my provider. Say this, He's my provider. He is my provider. So thank you for your diligence. Thank you for your love for God's house. Such a beautiful thing. Thank you for those joining online and and giving. 
and helping us to do what we do and touch people's lives and to bring the message of faith, hope, and love into people's homes. Love under pressure, we can do this because His Spirit gives us grace. Father, I thank you for your hand upon our lives. I thank you for the way that you have sustained us through times of pressure. Your grace is amazing. Your provision is wonderful and bountiful. God, even in times of perceived lack, you, you there, you're there and you're providing for us, even in the times when there's poisonous things around our feet. God, God, you, you provide a way through. God, when there's great difficulties and we seem we can't make a way through, you, you help us get through. God, we, we love you. We bring our tithes and our offerings to you. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everyone says, Amen. Amen. So thank you. Thank you for your gifts. If you want to, there's a place in the FPOS in the cafe. You can make a gift there. Um, it's a beautiful thing to be able to give to God. Now, we have a beautiful vision builders team. And I want to say thank you to Tom Sanson, to Heather, and to Robert Benjamin, part of our team. Robert has uh, been part of our team for several years now and he's going to be taking a break off the team. Uh, Robert, we really appreciate you and thank you so much for your help on the team. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's just beautiful. You know, um, it is, th this, this, this team help us, help us with, our, with our looking after our facility here. At the moment, um, it is my pleasure to invite you to a party that's going to happen on the 9th of July. And the 9th of July, we're going to have a party in this place. We're going to celebrate 30 years of, of uh, our church has been going for 30 years, which is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? 30 years. Uh, it's just, just absolutely amazing. 30 years, we're going to have a party. It'll be a Saturday night. The Vision Builders team are preparing that. There'll be more information about it, but to just make that, write that down in your diary. There'll be invitations coming out and about how that night's going to work. Uh, last year in June, our church committed to, uh, to giving $65,000 uh, during the course of this, this uh, next uh, financial year. As of March 22, we've received $43,000. Dollars, six hundred and twenty-seven. Isn't that isn't that pretty awesome? That, 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 that's why I'm saying thank you to their team, because because of their help to to help this happen. We're on eighty-nine percent of our target, so so thank you, thank you uh, for for our for our team, and thank you to our our people and our giving. Uh, what's happening? Well, what, one of the beautiful things is is behind the scenes, we have a vision planning team that are helping us think about, think about what does our future look like in, in our church and how do we step forward into everything that God has for us. So can you be praying for our vision planning team? Pray for us as we innovate and as we work on the process of how do we integrate. One of the things we celebrate in our church is the multiple age groups from elderly people through to the little ones and and th that is a part of the family that we have so be praying for our team as we think about and pray about how do how do we step forward it's been beautiful seeing incredible services at easter good friday and easter sunday morning we had a uh, afternoon service a few weeks back i i missed that because i was in hospital but uh, it was a great occasion I saw some footage of it and it was, we're going to have some more of those opportunities to innovate, to integrate. Uh, so can you be praying for, for, uh, yeah, for that team? The, the other thing I want to say is, is if you've recently arrived or maybe you've been sitting in church for a while and going, you know, I'd love to be more involved. Can you have a chat with us and say, here's a way that I would love to be involved. And it could be putting out chairs it could be helping with welcome it could be being part of a small group maybe you dream of being part of the the worship team or the production team or the cafe team or there's lots of spaces and places where people can be involved if you want to be more involved please chat with us and say hey uh, what can I do how can I with my gifts do something that's not too burdensome and and conversely if you're too involved 
please chat with us because we don't want people being under pressure beyond what they can carry. There's, there's no prize for that. We, we want our church healthy in every area. That is really, really important. Yes. That's enough from me just right now. I, Pastor Josh got a great message. We have a beautiful song that the worship team is going to lead us in. Aren't they amazing? Aren't they amazing? Absolutely. Let's go. I'll be able to stand, Jeff. sang this song at our Easter service, so everyone seemed to love it. Let's do what we love. See Praise you, Lord Jesus. Why don't you, why don't you look, close your eyes and lift your hands to God right now? 
Hungry hearts get filled in this place. Hungry hearts get filled in God's presence. Turn on some hunger in your heart to say, God, I really would love to hear from you today. I really need to hear from you because I've got relationships under pressure and I need some good news. Come and heal my heart. Heal our friends, heal our family, bring them to the knowledge of Jesus. And God, my God, you will be filled in Jesus' name. Taste and see that the Lord is so, so very good. Be blessed today. Have a seat, church. Yeah. Thank you so much, band. What a great song. Oh, man. Thank you for leading us in that. That's good. Hey, new series this morning, Love Under Pressure. And because we know that people are under pressure, you're under pressure. And then God, Jesus comes along and says something so fantastic as greater love has no one than this, than he who should lay down his life for his friend. And so therefore do that, lay down your life for your friend. And so I want to I look at how over these next four weeks, we're going to look at how Jesus's way of love actually releases pressure off your life. It actually leads you into a place of, in, of incredible joy it takes you to a place which actually brings proper results with healing relationships. It's something that he, he, he's leading you into a new way of living this morning. And, and if you're watching online for the first time, welcome. He's leading you into a new way of living as well. And so Jesus says, lay down your life. Whatever you've got, just lay it down. Just put it all on the table. Everything is, is no, sorry, nothing is off limits for God this morning because you are recognizing that there is a better life in store for you. And so we're going to kick off the series this morning by reading from, the, from Luke chapter 14, which is the parable of the great banquet. Who loves a good banquet? Just a love. Oh, I think we had a New Year's Eve uh, party a, a few years ago, and we had like a Middle Eastern theme, and everyone brought a dish, and there was way too much food, and it was the best night. It was just this beautiful range of just surprising flavors. Who loves Middle Eastern food? No, I guess some, yeah. And, and just like this great smorgasbord in front of us, and we laughed, and we, our hearts were happy, and we made just deep friendships. It was so good. So I want to look at that this morning. Over the next four weeks, we're going to look at how we need to be able to find grace. We, we need to be able to hear the voice of God in our lives. We need to be bold and take a step. And then we need to let God do the work that He loves doing in restoring relationships. It's going to be good. It's going to be a great, great ride. So four, four points over four services. We're going to take our time like you should do with a good meal, right? Let's open up to Luke chapter 14 together and let's read from verse 15. This is when a bookmark comes in handy. All right, so in Luke, oh, this is John. Come on, Josh. There we go. When one of those at the table with him, I love this, they're sitting around the table, so he's using a metaphor of where he actually is. When one of those who are at the table with him, Jesus, heard this, he said to Jesus, blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. How good does that sound? Blessed is the man who will, and woman who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. So what's that feast he's talking about? Let's just flick back quickly to Isaiah where my bookmark actually was. In Isaiah chapter 25 verse 6, it says, On this mountain of the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds the peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. That is, he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all the faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in Him. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. 
What a great picture. And so this man is just sitting there with Jesus and he's reveling in it. He's going, you know what, that day is going to be incredible when, when the Lord wipes away death from the earth, when he brings us into a feast. And that is going to be a heartwarming experience. That is going to be, I'm going to be so satisfied in my stomach and my heart. I'm going to be so overwhelmed with satisfaction. I'm going to be full of joy and gladness and I'm going to praise God. And so we get back. That's, that's, the, that's the picture. And Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, because everything now is ready. But they alike began to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a field, and I must go and see it, so please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought a yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out, so please excuse me. Still another said, I've just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town. Bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you've ordered has already been done, but there is still room. And then the master told his servant, go out into the roads and the country lanes and make them come in. Make them come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. What a picture that Jesus lays down of, of, of the kingdom of heaven, of what God wants for his people, of what God wants for your life. And he invites you. This incredible gift of grace is that you would be allowed in. That's, that's wonderful on two accounts. First of all, you're not an Israelite. You're not Jewish. And second of all, you're a sinner. Like, you, you don't deserve to be at the table no more than I do. Like, there's, there's no, like, we don't deserve to be in the great banquet of God, this, this great sense, of, this great place of ultimate satisfaction and rest in God's presence, feasting on God's goodness. Now, that's talking about heaven, yes. It's also talking about now because the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus has been, Jesus has dealt with death, and now we get to feast of God. We, we serve a God who says, come to me all who are weary and, weary and burdened, I'll give you rest. He also says, anyone who eats of my flesh will never hunger. Anyone who drinks of me will never thirst. We have the feast at hand. We have the entree right now, and for eternity, we'll get to enjoy satisfaction of our souls. And so Jesus is get, painting this awesome picture of what, God, what it's going to be like for us with, an, with a perfect connection with God. Your life actually feeling fully satisfied. Wow. I think the first thing we need to really realize out of this is that Jesus didn't set up this metaphor and say, once upon a time there was a man who, who organized a great dentist appointment. And he didn't say it was a great subpoena. And he didn't say it was a great meeting with the accountants. And he didn't say it was a great family meeting even. And it's not a great test. It's not a great debate. It's, it's, it's a great party. It's a great feast. If he was looking for a metaphor of what it was going to be like to, to be fully connected to God, fully at home in his presence, and the best metaphor that Jesus could come up with was a table with heaps of food on it. Not just a, a, a quick trip to Macca's, not just a, a little, like just, not just spaghetti bolognese on a Wednesday night. This is a, this is a banquet. You're, the invitation for you, for your hearts, your soul, your satisfaction, your sense of meaning is that you would come into God's presence and that you would be met with a banquet for you to feast on. Like that's the joy of coming to God. I love that. You're not coming for rations, but you're coming for plenty. You're coming to, so that you could eat and be satisfied like the 5,000 plus that were on the side of the hill that day. There were bread and, and lo like the loaves and, and fish left over because, and everyone ate and was totally satisfied. That's the picture of what God wants for you. And so for what's our goal in all of this? There's three things that we pick out of this story that we pick from the table of God, that your job is three things. And this is great, because when he says to lay down your life, I think we get one picture of it, 
But when he, when he tells this story, we see, uh, we see more meaning to what that actually means. He says, come to God and feast and be satisfied. That's number one. You come to God to feast. You don't come to God for retribution. You don't come to God for, ju- for judgment. You don't come to God because you, uh, because, and be scared, but you come to God and you, you feast on Him. You come to God and you'll find satisfaction for your soul. You come to God because in that, pr- in that place, you're going to be fed and you're going to be full of joy. And you're going to rejoice, like it says in Isaiah chapter 25. But then secondly, you come to God and you share. And so there's this picture of the table and people are passing bread and people are passing wine. There's people passing the fish. There's people passing the food around the table. No one is going hungry because you're here and you're sharing with one another. And so your job is to feast and your job is to share. And your job, thirdly, is to invite because it's a banquet, people. It's a banquet. There is so much here that you cannot eat it yourself. You can die trying. You can live forever trying. There is no end to the goodness of God. I love that. And so you come to God and you feast. You come to God and you share. And you come to God and you invite. And the heart of God for us is that we would be laying down our lives to feast, to share, and to invite. Not just to feast. The, 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 there are some people in the story who missed out on feasting. Like, they got their satisfaction from buying a new field, and I need to go and check it out. But it's a feast. Put the, put the field aside. It can look after itself. Come and feast. Come and enjoy God's presence. Only the hungry get into the kingdom of God. Only the hungry will get fed at the table. And if you're fully, fully satisfied by things in this world, then you'll never make it in. You'll, you'll never come. You'll, you'll never accept the invitation of God, the free grace of God. And the second one says, I, I've just got five yoke of oxen. I mean, I just put on 10 employees. I just, I just started a new business. I just got picked up a Sunday shift. I just, I just, got, I just got some extra work and I, I just can't fit God in right now. But it's a feast. Come and be satisfied. You're looking for something to satisfy your life, a sense of meaning, a sense of, a sense of productivity, but come. This is where you find ultimate meaning for your life. And he says, you just, you just got, so one of you just got married, but you won't come? Bring her too, because it's a feast. This is, this is going to eclipse any kind of marriage celebrations that you could have had. Come anyway. Come along. Come. And I, and I think that I think that we'll only invite to the level that we've feasted. Like, if you don't feast, you'll never, re- never think that there is enough to share, for, and then you'll never think there's enough to invite. The picture of heaven, the picture of the feast, the picture of life with God right now will dictate how much you want to invite and share with other people. And the more, I think the more we kind of try and straddle the fence of going, oh, I'm going to feast a bit on God between 6 and 6.05 when I wake up and read my Bible, and maybe on Sunday at 9.30, uh, between 9.30 and, and 10.30, uh, I'm going to feast then, but then I'm going to feast the rest of the time on, on other things that will try and satisfy my soul. We're not going to want to invite and share. We're going to want to invite and share to, to the cafe that we just loved or, or the new recipe that we just cooked or, or the new workplace that we joined. But, but where is the feast of eternity? It's in the presence of God. And so, so my call to you today is not just to, to add something to your life, but to put something down. Is to recognize the things in our lives that we are feasting on that, that don't bring us satisfaction, that don't bring us into a place of feasting in God's presence. Jesus says today, there is a feast for your soul to feel satisfied in. Do you, have you found it yet? Have you tasted and seen that the Lord is good? Have you found that every good gift comes down from the Father above? Have you realized that you, are, you have a full and free access into this place where your heart is at rest, where you can be fully happy and fully alive? 
this place of rest in God's presence. I want this for you. And the more you push in and, and eat of God, the more you're just wanting to share that thing, the more you're going to want to invite that. If you're worried about the, the level of invitation in your life, don't start there. Start with the feast because the feast will fuel you. The feast will fill you and the feast will power you into sharing and inviting. Let's do that. Why don't you close your eyes right now? My God, thank you so much, God, that you don't see our life with you as a, as a hard one. You want to take the yoke off. You want to exchange it with a better way of life. We, we realize today, God, that we get our satisfactions from so many different things, but we should lean into you. That, that we should get our satisfaction and joy from a life with you, a life of your word, a life of your prayer, a life of your presence. And my God, we, we hunger and thirst after that, God. Nothing else can satisfy like you do. You know, you may be here today and you're just... You've never been invited into the feast of God. This, this feast of God is this life of, of having every area of your life satisfied. You may realize that you're, you're not worthy of being invited into God's life. But because of Jesus, who God himself come to earth to die a death that we should have died, to pay the price for our sins, so to give us entry into this feast. Because of Him, you can come in today. And I want to invite you in. Come, come to the feast of God. Lay down your old life and come fresh into His presence. How do you do that? It's by accepting the invitation of grace. Grace is the invitation. God is saying, come, come to the life I designed to you. He's saying, come to, the, to, come to the party. Don't stay away trying to make yourself worthy or, or make yourself good enough. Don't, don't stay away trying to create your own party. The, the party is ready for you to come in. So if you're here today and you're, you've realized you've been staying outside, You're away from God and you want to come close. There is forgiveness. There is freedom from shame. There is new life ready for you. There is a feast. So right now, whether you're you're watching online or you're in person, we're going to pray a prayer together. And I want you to join in with me. A life of accepting God's invitation to this party. Dear Jesus, I am sorry for all that I have done wrong. And I thank you that you died for me, washing me clean, making me new, giving me new party clothes and an invitation into the greatest party of all time. Thank you for new life Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Laying our life down for our friends is, is laying down an old life to pick up a brand new life, which is, which is a feast. And, and the, the more you have a picture of a better future for somebody else, so he, these these people would be the best people to have at the party. God will put them on your heart and you'll, and you'll say, I just want to lay down my life for them. I'll, I'm going to be, I'm willing to, to have it tough now so that they can enjoy the feast of God. And so what we're going to do right now is celebrate some people who have laid down their lives for us. We're going to take a moment to remember their sacrifice. And so Pastor Chris, why don't you come up? Please welcome Pastor Chris. We're going to um, 
have the kids come and celebrate with us in a moment. But just before we invite the children to come up, just want to acknowledge that uh, I get to do this today because the others have gone before. Just want to acknowledge uh, Al Pearson and uh, Ben, who are also been in the position, Ben more than me. But one of the things I just want to share is that when I look back when I was getting ready to do this, that all, all the theatres that I got to serve in, I got there after all the work had been done and the sacrifices had been made. And so today we come to honour and for those that paid the price. And just like Josh that has served in our, um, said in our message today that Jesus laid down that sacrifice. So I'm going to do the ode in a moment, but we're just going to get the kids uh, to come to the front and then I'm going to say the ode. I'm going to get you to stand and the kids have uh, made some wreaths and we're going to lay the wreaths and then we're going to do our minute silence. And if you've had family members that have paid the price, I want you to acknowledge that, just think about it. And maybe you haven't or it's been too far away, but then in that time I want you to acknowledge that Jesus made the almighty sacrifice that we could be here today to celebrate the freedom. So kids, why don't you come down the front? Just hold your wreaths, just stay there for a moment. Hold, hang on to them. Just hang on to them for a moment, kids. Just lay them down. <laughs> Why don't we get you to stand, church? They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. lest we forget. Well done, kids. That was awesome. Well done. Thank God for those who saw our future and laid down their lives for it. Well, God bless you, church. Thank you, Pastor Don. Thank you so much. What a beautiful message from Pastor Josh. Can we uh, just uh, join together in prayer just a moment? I'd like to pray for the Galas, Mal's uh, in ISO. I think it's really good if we can pray for him. Can we do that? So, Father, Father, thank you for your hand traveling into all those who are watching online and for the Gala family in isolation today from COVID. Father, put your hand on Mal and bring healing to his body and energy to his soul and uh, bless the whole family, Father. And, Father... All, all those who are facing challenges at this moment, God, I thank you that you walk through with us through difficult times, that you're always with us and nothing can separate us from your amazing love. Thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life for us that we might live forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you.